everyone, Ryan Ratliff here, guide and fly tying manager at Mad River Outfitters. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're gonna to work on a fly. It's one of my top producing trout flies here in the state. It is, uh, it's not my own fly, but it's nothing that I invented, but I just tweaked it just a little bit. It's a trophy nymph set on a jig hook. So uh, there's some really awesome things that we've been doing with the tight line, Euro style nymphing, uh, high stick nymphing, lots of different things, whatever you want to call it. But with the new drift rod and this style of a, of a nymph, is, uh, it's, it's really productive and it's been producing really well for us. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm gonna just go ahead and put in the regular jaw and the Stonfo transformer. Um, this is the Beadmaster pad. We'll talk about, look for a, a review on this in a little bit. This is one of our customers who actually produces these. But nice thing, it's got this tool, helps you pick up the hook, and also some beads are magnetic, helps you pick it up. So we're just gonna get a jig hook, and this is the Gamagatsu jig hook. I'm gonna throw this in the, uh, we're gonna throw this bead on this hook. This happens to be a slotted bead. You can use uh, just a regular tungsten bead also, but this is a tungsten. That's the most important thing. This specific bead is a competition bead. It's a Hanuk bead. I'm really enjoying these beads. They are really, uh, really nice, really, really precise. They have lots of different finishes. If you're interested in some of these, make sure you just let us, give me a call here at the shop. I can get you some here. Um, we have we have some on the way, but I'm getting you a couple other ones. I can I can get you those, no problem. All right, so that bead sits down in there. A, a slotted bead puts the weight a little bit more towards the front than a regular just tungsten bead. So uh, it's just a preference thing. If you have a lot of regular tungsten beads, just grab some jig hooks, throw them on there. It, it works just fine too. One thing that I do is typically you wouldn't be tying a nymph with some bright fire orange UTC 70, but for this one, I like to add a couple hot spots. So you just start your thread down the hook. Trim off the tag. With this bright thread, I like to come up the hook shank just a little bit. Basically, all that's going to do, it's going to create this little tiny hot spot back on the hook bend. So, something a little bit different than the traditional trophy nymph that you can get. All right, so when you get pheasant tails, you can get the just a double pack. It usually has two or three feathers in there. If you get the whole, the whole clump, the tail clump, there's lots of feathers in here. And what that does is you can see the two different colorations in these feathers. One has a little more iridescence and a little more brown. The other one has a slight bit of orange, but a little bit more muted color. It's when you get a pack with a clump, there's lots of different colors in those feathers. So it kind of lets you pick and customize what you want to do. So I'm going to go with a little bit muted, the more orange color today. Basically what, what this fly is, it is a, a pheasant tail and it's gonna have a soft, a soft hackle collar, but it's a, a quick pheasant tail. So I'm gonna grab some of these fibers. I want the longer fibers here at the base of the feather, not up here where they're shorter. I want the longer ones because I'm gonna wrap the body with these. So I'm gonna pull, pull these out at a 90. Some of these here look a little bit weak. I'm gonna pull out, I don't know, maybe, maybe a dozen fibers. I'm gonna cut these off at the stem. Butts are all even, the tips are fairly even there. I'm gonna size it up. I want this, I want this tail to be roughly about half a hook shank length sticking out the back. So once I see where that size is, right where that sizing is, that location where I'm gonna start my thread wraps, I'm gonna grab it with my left hand, two loose wraps over top, readjust if I need to, two more tight wraps. This is one of the tricks I do. I fold this back, wrap over top of that. So just folded that back, it's out of the way at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some, this is that brassy copper wire, typically what you would use for a pheasant tail nymph. 
going to pull off the line keeper here, get the wire started. Measuring up exactly how much wire that you need, uh, it just kind of depends on what you're doing. Uh, you can cut this wire off of here if you wanted to. It's a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, the nice thing with some of these scissors are they have this little piece in there. It's like a little wire cutter. So I can drop it right into there. It cuts the wire and I'm not marring up my actual scissors. So got the wire, get it nice and straight. Going to lay it down, make it come up and touch the bead. Then I'm going to give some loose striping wraps up give it a little bit of tension cross those wraps back if you watch the video on the buck nasty this is the same type of technique that we use on that wire loop you give candy striping wraps up then you cross them going back and it kind of when when you do under maximum tension it really locks it in nice and tight the thing you don't want to have do have happen is this pull out once you get your body done so once I have that wrapped up and back, I'm going to go up to the bead, give it a little half hitch here. If you have a rotary vise and you're going to use the rotary option, you want to make sure you put the half hitch in. Swing the arm over here. Let me get this trash bin out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to grab, hold the wire back here, put that in my keeper. I'm going to grab the pheasant tail body here. And now I'm going to wrap this forward. They seem to be doing pretty good. If they start to separate, maybe you can give them a little twist. Basically, all I'm doing is just wrapping this up forward. Once I get up to where I'm just at the bead there, reach underneath in the left hand, flip the thread over two times. That should hold it. I'm holding maximum tension here, or, or at least some tension onto my thread. Shorten it up so I can manage it. Give two more wraps. We're good. Trim off these butt sections of that pheasant tail, two wraps over top of that. I'm right up at the bead at this point. It's not that big of a deal. I know I have some other materials to put in there, but I'm gonna over wrap on top of that. That helps build up the thorax a little bit. So I'm right up at the bead. You can see where that thread is. I'm gonna take my wire here. So I wrapped this way with my pheasant tail. It came around, I can see the the each one of the little barbs going this way, I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction. And I'll just hand wrap that so you can see how you do that if you don't have a rotary vise. Just big stripes going up. All this is doing is it's help holding the body down and giving you some segmentation. So a couple loose wraps, give it another pull tight. That should hold that in. Now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to do what we call the helicopter technique. It really isn't, I don't really know if there's a specific technique, but you twist it around and it just breaks right off. At that point, right where that wire broke off, I'm going to give two loose wraps to cover up that sharp point, then two more there, and it's all set. All right, now you can see my little orange collar that I have right there. I'm going to move my thread back to the body side of that orange collar. You can put some pheasant tail, wrap pheasant tail in here if you wanted to. Uh, for speed, I just like to grab some this peacock colored ice dub. Just gonna dub this on, gonna make a little dubbing ball here. Got this hot orange thread, so I wanna make sure I cover it up pretty good so it doesn't really show through there. Slide it up, just gonna rotate this on. Just going to make a little ball there for the thorax. That last little bit, I'm going to pull that back. The bead's still wiggling there. I know it's not tight. Just a little dubbing ball. It would fish just like this just fine. Um, basically, you're basically a pheasant tail without a wing casing. The last thing we're going to do here, we're going to grab some partridge. Hairline really is putting together some awesome partridge. It is now in stock. It was out of stock for a long time, but now we have it in stock. Uh, and I'm just gonna kinda go through. The smaller feathers are here at the neck. They get bigger as they go down the sides and down the back. Just gonna grab something. Uh, this is a size 14 hook, so I'm gonna grab something about at the base of the neck. Just pluck that feather off. 
Now I don't need this fuzzy stuff here, so I'm just going to pull this off both sides. That exposes the stem just like that. Then I'm going to grab right at the tip here, pull down. Seen me do this technique before. Um, this is where I'm going to tie in. This is what my son calls the Christmas tree. This little, uh, that little star on top of the Christmas tree, it's what my son calls that. So I'm going to take this tie in right at that little point there, right at the, the star, I guess is the best thing to say. All right, now I could grab a hackle plier if I wanted to, wrap it around, or I can just go by hand here. Just pin it, come up. Doesn't need to be real pretty because we're going to wrap around it. All right, so I'm down to where I just have the stem. Just holding on to the stem right there. I'm going to wiggle my thread up through. Second time right there. Give a little bit of tension. Pull on the stem one more time. Then I'm just going to rake all this back. Again, this is a quick nymph. I'm tying this real quick. This is a fill a box because I know I'm probably going to lose a couple of these. All right, so I see my stem in there. So I'm just going to come in, push with my scissors, precisely pop it right off. All right, rake everything back. Wrap over top. That fly is done there. Since I have the hot thread, I want to build this up just to make a little hot spot collar just enough so I can see it past the see it at the at the tail there and just to pass the bead all right at this point I'm pretty much done you could do a whip finish also Get a couple of them Back the thread up a little bit, fill it lock in, and then I'm just going to come in with my scissors, do the push cut. All right, and we're done there. If you wanted to, you could put some UV resin right behind the bead. Everything is good. That is a perfect little uh, modification on the trophy nymph, which is a modification on the pheasant tail, but this is on a jig, jig hook. Uh, you don't have to use a tight line technique with this. If you wanted to use an indicator, a float, a bobber, whatever you wanted to call it, and just fish this underneath of that. This will fish just fine. The hook point rides up, so it's nice because it doesn't snag as easily on things. You're still gonna get them, get them snagged on stuff, but nice little buggy little nymph. Work just about anywhere there's trout. So thank you for joining us for this fly. This is the Jig Head Trophy Nymph. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you call us, contact us here at the shop, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Thanks.